So you're unmuted now. Okay. Nerves calling. Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody had what's in the back of your car. Oh, you'll never know. <laughs> We're having a quilt show coming up next week, and so I am brought samples. So that's what's in the back of my car. So we have a fun project. This is the Kimberbell Dealers um, digital uh, project, and it is, are you ready, drum roll? It is so cute, and I'm gonna try and move it up so you can see those pineapples. And we're gonna do it on both sides. I cheated though, so that we could get through the project, and I did one side already. I used variegated thread, so it's really kind of fun. So, we could hear you whispering, oh well, that's okay. <laughs> I don't think I said anything other than it's in my car. Um, <laughs> and I have a really cute little car. So, for this project, you're going to need heavy cutaway. It is extremely important that you use a heavy cutaway. And yes, I, I'm playing around with my variegated threads. I'm having such a wonderful time with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me see if I can. There I go, I'll move my directions and I'm going to put, go ahead and hoop. So you've got it. And then I'm going to show you a couple of things. So I've got my hoop and I go ahead and I make sure that it's about an eighth of an inch. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Yeah, you can kind of see it. So that the stabilizers was rubbing against my machine instead of the um, hoop. It just kind of makes it nice. Um, I'm going to demonstrate making the markings on the bigger version. What's really cool about this, there is no kit, um, but you can purchase these pouches in all different colors. You've got the gold for this, which kind of goes with the pumpkins, and I used a green variegated thread on here. And then I went ahead, and I don't know if you can see it up close. It doesn't, you can't really see, but I, that's a yellow variegated thread, which I thought would be kind of fun. And um, so what I'm going to do is show you how to do it. In the email that you get from Kimberbell with the design in it, you're going to get two different sizes, one for the small bag and one for the large bag. So you can do both sizes, which I think is pretty cool. These bags are amazing. They um, have a really nice nap to them. They're like the night like velveteen felt they're kind of the difference and what I love about them is that I can embroider on it most of the time with velvets or um, um, anything that has a nap fleece I always put a topper on top 
But for these, for whatever reason, you ha I haven't had to. It just makes it nice so it doesn't, um, it, the, the embroidery doesn't go down. So it's dense enough that you don't have to do that. The other thing that you're going to need is either Bozal um, foam or some kind of flexi foam. Um, we, Salima is going to put that on the website. This is the coolest technique, and I wish that you could, we could have feel-a-vision where you could feel the pumpkins because what it does is it put the flexi foam is behind here, and it's, the, it's a different technique, but it's really cool so that it's kind of got a raised trapunto look underneath all of this, which is really, really cool. So the first thing that um, their instructions say is to get your bag ready. So I went ahead and hooped my hoop with the um, stabilizer. And then on the back of the stabilizer, or on the bag, I put SF-101 or Fusible Woven. I happen to like Fusible Woven uh, from OESD the best. It has a little more body to it, but um, SF-101 is perfectly fine with it. So what you're going to do, and this was kind of an interesting technique of how they measured, but it made sense after it was over. So what you're going to do with it is, with your ruler, you're going to measure from the center of the zipper one inch and put a pin. And then you're gonna do it from the other side, one inch from the center and put a pin. Okay, and you only put the pin through the bag, not the lining. Okay, and then of course you turn it around and you do it to the other side. One inch from the end, one inch from the other side. Okay, then what you're going to do is turn it to the inside and then from where those pins are, you're going to draw a straight line all the way across, okay? And then you're gonna do that on both sides because this time you don't have to do both, but I think it's better if you do both, embroider both sides. So I did it on the other side. And then what you wanna do, since all bags are a little bit different, you're going to fold it in half across the whole bag and I drew a little line here and a little line here. And then you draw, by putting your ruler on your straight line here and matching here, I draw a line down the center. Those are the lines that you will need. Now the next thing that you're going to do is um, once you've got those lines, you're going to take your lining and hopefully you can see this and I'm going to fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it, and fold it. And I want to see if you can see on this side. So I folded it to get it out of the way. So what I'm going to do now, so you get the idea, is I've done this side. So what I'm going to do is take this and I'm gonna fold it back this way just to get it out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin it right here, just like that. Just so the lining is not gonna be sewn into it. We have enough to worry about with not having to worry about the lining. So um, with that, we've got that ready to go. So the next thing that we're going to do, once you've got all those lines drawn, is you're gonna stitch you're going to put them on the machine and the heavy cutaway and please 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 make it the heavy cutaway and you'll understand in a few minutes of why that is so i'm going to go ahead and change it to my sewing machine there we go and i'm going to go back so you can see hopefully if i hit embroidery and i go here that on your machine you have, if I go into my February files for Lini and click embroidery files and I click my PEZ, there is a five by seven and a six by um, 10. So I'm gonna go with the five by seven today, just for time's sake. 
I've got put my variegated thread in. Um, you could put water soluble in. I chose to keep it with the variegated thread this time. So I'm going to hit set. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit so you can see my machine. Yep. And so the first thing it's going to stitch out is a placement line for my foam. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that out. And hopefully, you have to hit embroidery. And this is, I can't believe this technique and how it works. Okay, so now the next thing that it's going to stitch out is the tack down for the foam. And you're kind of going, huh? <laughs> you're just tacking down the foam? Yeah, it's actually going to tack down. I don't need to pin it. It pretty much stays. Um, I am going to watch it a little bit. And it's going to go around twice on every single um, pineapple. This takes about two minutes. Um, once this is done, then we need our handy dandy scissors and you're going to cut away the excess foam from around. Um, can you use metallic thread? Absolutely. That would be really pretty, Betty. I thought the mat, I couldn't decide because I thought pineapples, they're yellow, they're green. And then I thought, well, so I'll use the variegated. And then I thought the variegated that I've got is pretty. It's a um, OESD variegated or Isocord. Um, they've come out some really fun colors. Um, there is the green one is what I used on the um, well, it's stitching out. I don't know if you can see, I used the green variegated on the yellow. And so I thought, oh, the yellow variegated on the green would be kind of fun. And what takes the most on this project is cutting the foam away. So you can see why you need the um, stabilizer that's the heavy weight because you're adding this foam and it does have its own kind of memory to it and um, if you use a tear away especially when we're cutting it um, the, your stabilizer will probably tear and it won't be matched up so now what I'm going to do is take it off We'll switch cameras. Use my curvy scissors. Salima's got these back in stock in case anybody was interested. I just love these scissors. And I do a rough cut to get away all of the um, Kind of bulk. Now, if you were going to do this again, you could use all these scraps that I'm nicely cutting off to put down for each individual one. 
but um, you don't have a placement line so you could stitch it twice if you wanted to let it stitch out once then you've got a placement take it back one step and then put the foam down on each one um, if you were going to use the excess foam just a suggestion and I'm rough cutting it just to get the excess away and then I'll go back in and kind of tidy up afterwards I never thought to put foam down on top of anything for this um, technique. I think it is pretty cool. this is what takes the longest is cutting the foam now Betty that you mentioned the metallic thread this would be pretty with gold thread for the pump for the pineapples That is an awesome idea. So I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit. You don't really have to do it that close because you've got the bulk of the felt bag or the um, uh, velveteen bag. Looks like I'm just about done. So now I'm going to put it back into the machine and it's going to stitch my placement line for my bag. So it looks like I'm pretty good. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch the placement line. So now I'm going to go ahead and place the bag. So I'm going to bring it back to the other camera so that you can see me do that. Okay. So there's a line going down the center and there's this line going here. And what they want you to do is place the middle. And I'm going to take my pins out because that could be a treble. So what I'm going to do is fold it a little bit. My fingers are cold. And make sure. And then I'm going to go ahead and sneak a pin in here just until it gets it set. Since I'm moving it from machine to table. But guess what? Hello. <laughs> I'm going to put it the right way. All right. So, what it's going to do now is, is literally, and I'm going to tape it in the middle, or pin it in the middle so it doesn't move on me. Until I get it to the machine because it's going to stitch a tack down all the way around. You want to make sure again that your zipper is out of the way, which it is. Your piece of lining that you've uh, pinned is out of the way 
and all you have is your bag. And you can feel, it's the weirdest thing to feel the lumps underneath it from the foam. It's, it's, I think it was just such a cool idea. Okay, so I'm gonna change cameras. Definitely move this out of the way. And of course it moved on me. Oh, my pen didn't work. And I'm gonna go ahead and let it stitch around. You could tape it. And here's where I might use my water-soluble thread for um, for the tack down of it, but that's fine. Now, the last thing that it's going to do, it's going to stitch the um, quilting. And so I'm just going to go ahead and let it go and watch it stitch. This takes about four minutes. It's a great, quick um, gift for anybody. They have it like a pencil bag, which would be fun. And it literally stitches around and through to the lines on the pumpkin around that foam. I would stay near it just in case the vibrations move this uh, moves the other side of the bag over that could be a disaster I'm amazed how close that it gets to the top of the bag with their inch measurement So you can see the key to why you need to use the heavy duty um, or heavy cutaway because of that foam and then because of the, the weight of all of this on it. But what a cool idea. And yet the foam is kind of porous so that it can stitch through it. I wouldn't use the um, heavier duty uh, stuff, but for the Bozel or um, is probably the, the one that works the best or the uh, flexi foam that's from Kimberbell. And I have that on hand for lots of purses and things like that that I've made in the past. So I had pieces.
It's that easy. So let me take it back. And I'm going to move it back to the overhead. Yes, Soft and Stable by Annie would work as well. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and unhoop it. So the design works in a 6x10, the bigger one, or the 5x7 for the smaller one. Now that I have this all set, I'm going to take my scissors. And you want to cut away your excess um, stabilizer. It is a quilt design, yep. So now we want to take the pins out, and there it is. Is that fun? So now, it looks like I, again, because I had to move it fit inside, I'm off a little bit, but that's going to be fine. So what I'm going to do is move all pins, align both sides of the zipper pouch, velveteen right sides together, matching up the corners. So I'm going to make sure that I open it, and this is where um, sometimes you forget when you don't want to do that and I'm just going to pin it and usually I use my wonder clips but I didn't bring them with me and I'm going to go ahead and trim this off I tried tearing it it was not it was not fun I have wonder clips oh right there and in the cart oh second shot. oh yep. I've got Wonder Clips. Hooray! <laughs> Salima has Wonder Clips. <laughs> I don't know what I do without Wonder Clips. I have them all over every by every sewing machine and in my living room. And so I just pin around all sides. But before I do that, I should read my instructions. What it said to do is um, you want to align both of these, and then I you need to bring, hopefully I can show you this, the zipper together, okay? So I want to make it so they're on top of each other. And this one I may just pin. Okay. And then it says, now I'm making the five by seven. And so I'm gonna do the same on this side so that it kind of keeps it nice and even. I had a pin here, like so. Okay. So you're going to measure six and a half inches from the center notch um, of what we marked, okay? Um, mark this point with a water-soluble pin. Now, on the five by seven, you're going to mark five and a half inches down. So from the center mark, this is where, and it's really hard, I should have used a different color for you. Um, my bag is... From the center march it says. So where my zipper is to the five and seven is right there. I'm going to use my Frixion pin. Okay. 
okay? And then um, you're gonna do the same on this side. If you can see that. And then they want you to take it all the way across. And I think they're doing this because when you get these from the manufacturer, I don't know if you can notice, can you see that at this edge here, see how it goes a little awry? So by them marking it five and, and a half on each side or six and a half for the big one, um, you get a, a nicer finish on the inside of it. So, um, and then I believe we just sew, we're gonna sew all the way around. And it does say to use, um, doesn't say a quarter inch seam. Oh, you'll cut a quarter inch. So I'm going to do five eighths or around the whole thing. My bag may be a little bit shorter, but just because, again, they're not quite even. So um, it's going back to my old sewing days instead of a quarter inch for quilting. Um, you're going to be doing sewing. But one of the things that I do, and this is just a leany thing is I will pin where I need to stop. So it says to leave a three inch opening, so hopefully you can see that. So I'm gonna put a pin instead of a clip where I need to stop. So I'm gonna sew all the way around and I'm gonna stop here so that I can um, turn my bag. But as you can see, this is not matching up here. So I'm gonna match it as best I can leave that there and clip and the bag itself is nice and neat so I'm going to do five eighths and go on that line and five eighths and all the way around leaving a three inch opening so let me set my machine for sewing and go back to the machine and we will go ahead and sew I'm going to go ahead and leave the same color, the variegated thread in. If I was at home, I would probably um, put sewing thread in. Give it a little more sturdy um, seam, but for right now I'm just going to do this. feet. So used to doing a quarter inch. Okay, I've got my three inch mark, my stopping point. So I'm going to set it on five eighths. Needle down, foot down. And I need to plug the foot in. Funny how the machine won't work if you don't have the foot pedal in. And I do backtrack there. Rotate. Now here's where you want to be careful. I am going to go over the zipper. Go slowly. And I go backwards and forwards over the zipper. Again, that's kind of a leany thing, but I just want to make sure that zipper is not going to go, not going to open on me.
once again I'm going over the zipper. So I'm going to go slowly here and go backwards and forwards just to give it a little more strength. camera on. Thank you. <laughs> so what I did is I went around it, went over the zipper twice, and, and back and forth, and then did this. One of the things that I was going to show you, and I, that's why I left the camera the way it was, is on your screen, and let me go back to the sewing machine here. One of the things that I make sure that I have on is the needle down when I'm going in turning and that I have the foot so that um, this button right here, hopefully you can see that. So this one and this one with the needle down so that when I stop, and let me go back to the machine, that it will stop and the needle will be down and the foot will lift up so I can easily pivot. So um, it's just a nice thing that I do with most of my sewing so that I can make sure that um, I have the ease of, of being able to, to rotate. And I use that especially in applique and in um, anything where you have to do pivots. So let me now turn it back to the other screen here. And here we are. I'm going to take my pins out. And hopefully I remembered, I'm pretty sure I did. You want, you can clip your corners if you want. Okay. And then let's turn this baby inside out. Oh, it does say to to um, cut with the rotary cutter, but I'm going to I'm going to just use the scissors here and cut a quarter of an inch. My husband teases me that I. my measurements, I'll say, oh, that's 12 inches. And he'll go, no, it's not. And we usually measure. And I said, I deal with measurements all day long. I do leave a 5 8 inch where my opening is. And then I will cut like that. Just don't cut your fingers. I love these Kai scissors. They are the best scissors. I have them at each of my stations with my Kirby's. You need to cut something strong. They're the ones to go to. Okay, there's all my scraps. Now for the unveiling. Now that um, heavy duty cutaway does make it a little bit harder to, um, to turn. And you do need your good old R&K tool or the OASD one. Let me get that right here. I could have left my opening a little bit more, but that's okay. Once it's through, then what you're going to do is poke out the corners carefully. And the harder will be the rest of the bag here. 
because you've got that cutaway in there, which is fine. are nice and taut. And then what I do with the inside, you could by hand, I would take this over and press it, but nobody's going to see the inside of this bag. So I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I could change the thread, but again, nobody's going to see inside. So I put my needle down and we'll go back and forth. Back and forth. I know it's tacky. I probably at home would have changed to green, but it's a lot better than my hand sewing, that four little word, even though I've been recommended to do it. And the only thing that you've got to do is take out this basting stitch that they have on each side. So that's my nighttime watch TV um, remove it. But it does come out really easy. This is a really fun project. I was trying to figure out where I could put bling on this, because you know I'm the bling girl. And it could put some bling in between the pumpkins, or the pineapples, um, if you wanted to. If not, it'll have to go unblinged. There you go. And I'll rip this side out too. And you've got a quick gift. The zipper pull is right here. And it's all done for this. And what I did on the other side while I was at home is this stitch that I did here that stick based it down, I used water soluble thread. So it does come out a lot easier. So isn't that fun? I can turn it this way. Very quick, very easy, just a lot of fun. And so you use your variegated threads, you get a different look. Bling on the zipper pull. Now you're talking, Margie. Yeah, I could do that. So Anyway, that's it for this time. Anybody have any questions or anything like that? It's a fun, quick project. And um, this is the one size. And again, you can get the bigger size. And this is great for pencils, for a pencil um, case. Um, just really fun, fun um, things you can use it for. I've been using the little ones for my USB sticks so that I've got them all in one place. So um, hopefully that, um, that will take it for, well, done for this month. I can't believe it. January or February's digital blank is done. So know that there is no kits this time, but you can purchase the bags. And I believe that Salim has got them on the app as well as on the website. And um, again, it's got the lining and everything in it. So it's really quick. And the only thing you have to use is the SF-101, the puffy foam, and the uh, heavyweight cutaway stabilizer, okay? Enjoyed it, and we will see you next time.